term colored may be considered outdated and even offensive in some countries but in South Africa it is a legitimate ethnic group. Colards can be seen as Afro-Asian, descending from the early Hottentot busters, and the Asian slaves brought to the Cape. In post-apartheid South Africa, they are considered black because they are of African descent. However, they are essentially multiracial and multi-generationally mixed, as opposed to being biracial. Colards descend from generations of mixed-race people, like the Malagasy, Mauritians and St. Helenians. The Malagasy are essentially mixed with Austronesian settlers from Borneo and East Africa. Similarly, St. Helenians generally descend from British, Chinese, East Africans and Malagasy people. Immigration to South Africa from St. Helena was very common in the 19th century, especially after the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869. Many came to South Africa as indentured laborers. Some immigrants also came from the Philippines, Japan, Macau, Malacca, West Indies, Brazil, and possibly New Guinea. A lot about the coloreds and their culture is unfamiliar even to other South Africans. As a result of the mixing of these diverse groups, most coloreds across South Africa can trace their origins to the first group of slaves who came from Asia, East Africa, as well as the Khoi and San. From these unions two distinct groups emerged, the Asian Cape Malays and the multiracial coloreds. In addition, certain native Khoi and San groups like the Nama were also considered colored in apartheid. Therefore, coloreds have inherited a rich history and culture. Slaves played an important part in creating a distinctive Cape culture, notably in the development of Afrikaans, music and culinary traditions. Furthermore, some colored groups like the Griqua and Busters also established their own nations with their own laws and currency. Coloreds and Cape Malays are known for the Klopser. It is unique to the community and can also be attributed to the slaves. When slaves first arrived at the Cape, they attempted to deal with their sense of melancholia by beating on the Guma drum. They used the drum and dance steps, which mocked British rulers. These dances included the lances, the squares and the quadrilles. Dance still forms an important part of colored identity, with the jazz dance being the most popular. Other dances include the real dance, which is a celebratory dance performed by the San and Khoi communities. Colards have also become well known for their participation in the arts, from musicians like Abdullah Ebrahim to producer Lance Peterson, who is the youngest national producer in South Africa. Lance also started his own radio station, called Vibe Radio and is Africa's first youth-run radio station. Music and the theater have always formed a central part of this community, this stems from the days of slavery. The so-called Gumaliki or Guma song is said to have been started by a slave named Byron. Songs were sung half in Malay and half in Dutch and were called ditties. In the 80s Jonathan Butler made it big on the international music scene, while world-renowned composers like award-winning Trevor Jones and Raymond Alexander represented in film and theater. Musicians like J. Paxton Feliz, Craig Lucas, Jimmy Nevis, Danny Bagel, Jared Ricketts, and Lorenzo Davids are carrying forward the proud musical traditions of their forebears. While Youngsta CPT, a.k.a. Jean Grey, Shane Eagle, and Yamasan have become well-respected local hip-hop artists, Yonkeler Grange and Taryn Lam have been major contributors to the Afrikaans music scene. These musical talents were often nurtured in church and school choirs. Faith has always been central to the community, most coloreds are Pentecostal, New Apostolic, Catholic or Methodist. In contrast the Cape Malays are exclusively Muslim. This group gave rise to the Cape Malay choir known for their distinct way of singing. Colored children are often encouraged to participate in bands and play musical instruments, like the guitar, the violin, flute, the piano, drums, trumpets and trombones. Coloreds are also known as great and enthusiastic storytellers, an example of this is the works of the late and well-respected Adam Small. This tradition is continuing with people like author of Living Colored, Yusuf Daniels and author and poet, Athel Williams. Athel became the first person to earn a master's degree from five top universities. He also holds a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering from WITS is an investment banker and he made history by winning the annual Sol Plyke European Union Poetry Award twice in a row. Nowhere was this gift of storytelling more evident than in colored theatre. In the days of apartheid, coloreds created their own theatrical productions, relevant to the times and their community. Since they weren't allowed into white theatres, 
many plays started out in makeshift theatres. The oldest drama group, Kinis Fani says, started out in the home of Omar, Budaman Adams, his wife, Marielda Adams together with Elizabeth Isabel helped with the production. Shows like Kinis Fani says, Joe Barber and Prison Code still remain relevant today. The colored community has produced some well-respected playwrights, producers, and directors, like Oliver Hemarnas, Ian Gabriel, Darren Joshua, and award-winning producer, Liesl Tommy. Darling local actors and actresses, include June Van Merch, Ilsa Klink, Leanne Van Rooy, Taryn Weingard, Charlene Surdy Richards, Clint Brink, Dan Jark Motown and Denise Newman. While Leslie Ann Brandt, Candice McClure, Kim Eng L. Brecht, Reese Ritchie, Shannon Koop Chun, Anton David Jafta, and Natalie Becker have become regular stars in Hollywood productions. Like the rest of South Africa, sports form a major part of the culture. Amongst coloreds, rugby and cricket have always formed a major part of their identity. During apartheid, coloreds were not allowed to play for national teams. As a result, Many supported opposition teams, especially when it came to rugby. Colards, like other black South Africans famously supported New Zealand teams, like the All Blacks. The support for the All Blacks started in the days of apartheid and because many identified with the Maori players. Today many still support the New Zealand rugby teams, much to the disdain of other South Africans. Interestingly New Zealand has become home to quite a number of colards who emigrate abroad. Actresses Leslie Ann Brandt and Faye Smith started their careers on New Zealand television. Another famous Cape Colored from New Zealand is Kiwi sociologist Nander Tankchos whose mother is Cape Colored. Furthermore, all black swinger the late Joan Alamu and Lock Sonny Bill Williams, are beloved amongst coloreds and interestingly both of them married Cape Colored women. Famous South African rugby players hailing from the colored community, include Cheslin Colby, Dylan Lades. Ewan de Jong, Brayden Palsa, and the late Chester Williams. While, the late Basil de Oliveira, Paul Adams, Garnett Kruger, Henry Williams, Herschel Gibbs, and Rory Kleinveld has been instrumental to South Africa's success on the cricket field. Another favorite sport of coloreds is athletics. It has always seen a lot of support and participation from the community, producing world-famous sprinters, like Wade Van Niekerk and Sharon Klein. While girls usually play sports like netball, field hockey and participate in the major rets. In recent years, swimmers like Allard and Alaric Basson and Michael Howley have done well in international competitions. While, in tennis, Raven Clausen and his doubles partner Michael Venus won the ADP 500 in Germany and in 2012, Kenny Solomons became South Africa's first chess grandmaster. Others, like eight-year-old Trake Pathan are also making waves on the golf course. Trake won the U.S. International Kids Tournament in February of 2020. Other sports becoming popular amongst coloreds include surfing, karate, long jump, high jump, and bodybuilding. Car stunts and drag racing have always been popular amongst colored youths, making people like law student and spinning queen, Stacey Lee May famous. Like most children around the world computer games have in recent years become increasingly popular. As a result, Common childhood activities like kite building, playing marbles, or gaddies, tag or hide and seek have become less popular. However, dove breeding and racing have always been and still remains quite popular amongst colored males. They even have a pigeon racing organization, called the Western Cape Pigeon Racing Organization. A rite of passage amongst coloreds is receiving a key from their parents on their 21st birthday. The key is symbolic, as it symbolizes coming of age. The child receives a key to unlock his or her future and one cannot receive a key if you are a parent or married. Besides the matric ball, this is a day most young people look forward to as children. It is usually a big event taking months of planning. All South Africans have a matric dance at the end of their high school career. In the colored community, neighbors, friends, and family come to congratulate and support the matriculant. Cause colored women often worked in the textile industry. As dressmakers and seamstresses, they usually make matric ball gowns and wedding dresses. Non-whites were even excluded from the world of pageantry and this is something that has been appreciated by the colored community for a long time. Unfortunately they weren't allowed to participate on equal footing with their white counterparts. As a result, coloreds and other blacks had to participate in a separate national beauty pageant, 
called Miss Africa South, while their white counterparts participated in the main Miss South Africa national pageant. Non-white contestants weren't even allowed photo ops with their white counterparts. The first Miss Africa South winner was a colored woman, named Pearl Jansen, who also became the first runner-up at Miss World, in 1970. This inclusion of two participants from one country drew a lot of criticism, as it was seen as unfair. In the 1970s, at the height of apartheid, the Spring Queen pageant emerged. It encouraged support for local clothing and textile workers, of which colored women formed an integral part. The pageant has seen a lot of support from the colored community. In 1974 Evelyn Peggy Williams won Miss Africa South, while Annaline Creel won the Miss South Africa title. Creel went on to win Miss World and Evelyn Williams was barred from attending the banquet held in Creel's honor, even though she was invited by Creel herself. In 1992 Amy Clanehans became the first black contestant to win the Miss South Africa title, in Santon. After the pageant, Amy and her mother headed back to Cape Town, but could not find any accommodation due to their race, hence, they had to sleep in her car. In Miss World, she chose to walk with a white flag instead of the apartheid flag. Since her win there have been six colored Miss South Africa winners, namely Berna Lee Daniels in 1995 and Joanne Strauss in 2000. Back-to-back -back colored women were crowned Miss South Africa with Tanzi Kutsi in 2007 and Tatum Keshwar in 2008. Liesl Laurie won the title in 2015 and Tamarin Green in 2018. In 2015, Candace Abrahams became the first South African to win the Mrs. World title, which is a pageant aimed at married women. In 2018, Tamarin Green became the first black South African to make it to the finals in the Miss Universe pageant. Similarly, Fashion has long been part of the colored community and in recent years colored-owned brands, like Fanny Cop has become popular by explicitly expressing colored identity. Other famous colored designers include Craig Jacobs and Celeste Lee Aronser. While models like Carmen Solomons, Yogan McNeil, Melissa Magira, Yana Sky Bukeman, Lisa Marie Jafta, Liam Duplessis and Jovan Jackson represent on the catwalks and magazine pages. Many historians believe that Afrikaans formed in the mouths of the slaves. Though it is mainly Germanic, it takes many loan words from other African and Malay languages. Afrikaans used to be called kitchen language by early settlers, who at the time still spoke pure Dutch. Today like in the past most coloreds speak a creolized version of Afrikaans called cops. And like in the past, cops is again pejoratively labeled kitchen and gangster language, by some Afrikaans purists like Dan Rudd. However, there are minor similarities between coloreds and Afrikaners in terms of language, faith and even names and surnames. Like Afrikaners, coloreds typically have Christian names like Matthew, Micah, John, Eva, Naomi and Abigail. Hyphenated names like Leanne, Tamianne, Mona Lisa, Jarn Pierre, Jarn Mark and Jean Paul are more common amongst coloreds. Other common male names include Elroy, Heinrich, Jaden, Caden, Kyle, Lyle, Marco, and Neil. Common female names include Charlene, Janine, Kim, Tanya, Tatum, Taryn, Tamarin, Tracy, and Tamsin. In contrast, Cape Malays can usually be identified by their Arabic names. Common male names amongst them are Abdullah, Amir, Ebrahim, and Zahir. While females usually have names like Aliyah, Aisha, Amira, Nadia, Zara, and Zubaydah. It also isn't uncommon to find Christian coloreds with Arabic names for example actors Junid Carrera and Zayn Mies. Muslims and Christians have coexisted and interacted in the same space for years without any major conflict and intermarriage between the two groups is not uncommon. It is also common for coloreds to have European surnames, like Abrahams, Cludi, Jankies, Williams, and Van Niekerk. This is because slave masters usually gave their last names to their slaves. Less common than European surnames sometimes coloreds may even have Arabic or Indian surnames, especially in Cape Town and KwaZulu Natal. Former Miss South Africa Tatum Keshwar is just one such example. Coloreds often also have surnames, named after the months of the year like Michael February and Jarno Augustus. This indicates the month in which the slaves arrived in the Cape. These surnames are unique to the colored community. Popular colored dishes include breedies or stews for example Vater Blomaki Breedy and Tomato Stew. Rooster Brood, Curry Bunnies and Soutvis are also commonly enjoyed. 
Soutvis is a dried and salted fish. Pollards were traditionally fishermen and many lived in small fishing towns, like St. Helena Bay and Saldana Bay. Fish would usually be dried and salted as a means to preserve it, before the days of refrigeration. Some desserts enjoyed are trifle, fridge tarts, milk tarts and snowballs. Some collards, especially in the Eastern and Northern Cape produce their own alcoholic beverages like pineapple and ginger beer. As a result, some of the best wine producers in South Africa have been colored, like Berine Sauls, owner of Tessier Ralsdal Wines, Seven Sisters Wines, owned by the Clanhans Sisters, Carmen Stevens, South Africa's first black female winemaker, and also Mockham and Ricardo Green, the father and son team behind the house of La Rick Mel.